Hey everybody, this is Grayson from Proceed to Checkpoint. I'm back with another video uh, and what I am just wanted to try and take a look at is some more Project Spark stuff. I mean, it's been a little while since I put out that original video showing you Gangnam Style where I promised that I'd be showing you some more stuff about Project Spark and I haven't really lived up to that. So that's something that I'd kind of like to address now, okay? So, while I'm not going to be exactly building anything, uh, what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a look at some stuff that has been created in the Project Spark community um, and some of the best things that have been created in the Project Spark community just so that you can see for yourself um, what is going on in Project Spark, what you can do, the capabilities of it, things like that. And if you want to give it a go and you've got an Xbox One then maybe this will provide you with some kind of inspiration. Even if you don't have Project Spark, even if you just make your own games, if you make them in RPG Maker or Unity or whatever, uh, or game salad, then this might give you some ideas. Um, the first thing that I want to look at really, um, or show you, is something that I've been looking at, or I've looked at over the past couple of days, because over the past couple of days I've been looking around in Project Spark, right, and I've been looking at some stuff that has been created, right, and this is one of very basic, this is one very basic game that I think is really great that I, I want to take a look at first. Uh, with you. So it's very basic. It's called block jumper. It's a work in progress uh, It's a test level and it's got some really nice mechanics. It's very basic very quick very easy to to work on you know uh, So we're this little eyeball guy and we are just basically trying to platform our way through this test level so Obviously we can't jump when that's there So we need to wait for that to be out of the way and these yellow blocks they're bouncy so we can bounce around on there, and that red block is going to come back, and then it's there, and it's not, and it'll be back now, okay? And then we've got this yellow block again. Oh my, what's this? A new mechanic, sweet. So we're going to bounce up here, jump across here, bounce back up here, hit this switch, jump onto this platform, and we're there now. And the positioning of these yellow blocks is really great, right? Because not only does it bounce you up, it bounces you in the direction in which you hit it. So you see there that we bounce directly to the left. And this is all programmed in game, like nobody told this guy how to do this. This is stuff that he figured out himself, which is really great, you know. Um, it's a wonderful little game that I would be very interested in playing the rest of once he eventually comes around to it. And then we've reached the goal and we're done here. Thank you for playing the test level for Block Jumper. Thank you for making it, buddy. I really appreciate that. And then, with Project Spark, you don't really have any means of getting out of it, apart from exiting. Okay, and I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Nice going, Welshie 10,000. You did a really good job there. And then we're going to go back, and some new stuff is here showing up on this main screen. Uh, sort out online. Um, what you'll find if you're looking at Project Spark, if you're looking through stuff that isn't the top rated, um, a lot of it will be sandbox style content, okay? Like people will build themselves a sandbox and then they'll put it up um, and it'll basically just be a basic character with a sword and a ton of mobs um, and that's all it's going to be. Um, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, in order for you to learn you need to build yourself a sandbox. Um, but it, it's just a little bit uh, more difficult to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff sometimes, you know. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to take a look at this particular map, Link's Adventure. Um, which is something that is really great, it's got a ton of quests um, involved in it. Um, and it's, this guy has basically recreated Link. Uh, he's created Hyrule, he's created a ton of quests, um, and he's built a village, and it, it's just really great, you know, to see what has been done here. And, you know, instead of explaining it, you know, I think it's best that we just play it more than anything like that, you know? Because, as we all know, the best way to learn is to get hands-on. Any second now. It's important to note as well that Project Spark is still in its beta stages, um, so there are going to be kinks and things to work out. 
Welcome to Midrule. The evil Stomp have filthy islands with darkness. Your quest, kill Stomp and save Midrule. Okay? Easy enough. Skip intro, click left mouse button, or gamepad A. Okay. Link, Midrule is full of evil creatures. Do not go off on adventures without your sword. You can find it in the treasure chest, chest straight ahead. Cool. So that's where my sword is. Use gamepad Y to view inventory and quest log. Windmill. Okay, so B is to do a diving roll. Use gamepad left trigger to view world map. Okay, you've got to hold it down though, so clicking it doesn't do the job. You've got to hold that shit down. Uh, mid rule forest, death mountain, great tree island. And that's our entire map, okay? Uh, white dot is you. Red dot, fortress, key, chest. Okay. So that's something there, but first we're going to take a look at here. Hilda, I have your key to the sword chest. Visit me at the windmill. Okay, so that's locked for now. I just picked something up there by pressing B. I'm not too sure what it was. But it's it's pretty great to see that this was all created by a dude. You know? Um, and the thing is, you don't need to have experience in game dev or anything like that for you to be able to make this. This is based on pre-built models and things like that. You know? So, uh, have at you, basically. I think, based on... What we saw there at the start is that uh, that um, it's also available on PC. Right? So this guy wants 100 coins for a better sword and explains a flat out. Give me 100 coins and I'll give you a better sword. Cool. Hello, mister. Do you want to buy one of Grandma's life potions? Only 10 coins. No thank you for the moment. Though the gesture is appreciated. Okay, so here's our windmill. And this is going to be Hilda. You can see she's got a quest marker over her head. She's interactable. She's got that little glowing outline. Let's press B. Hello, Link. Here's your key to the sword treasure chest. Link, speak with the townspeople. Some of them have quests for you. Okay. Finding key quest completed. Cool. Awesome. What's this person got to say to me? Hey, Link. Have you tried the teleport yet? It'll take you to Scott Stomp's floating island. I think Anna needs your help there. Okay. Y for quest log. Okay. So, the green ones are easy. Yellow ones are normal. Red is hard. Complete quests will give you coins or item rewards. Press controller Y to keyboard or keyboard E to exit quest log. Okay. Uh, so, unlike the map, you can just press that once and then you're good. So, let's grab our sword out of our chest. Oop, there it is. And X is to attack. Oh. Um, right. So what else have we got around here? An outhouse. A smaller outhouse. Um, hi, Link. To enter Stom's fortress, you need to collect all five keys to unlock the fortress door. Okay. Okay, so that's destructible. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, as I was saying before, you know, this is all... You don't really need any dev experience here. Because I've kind of had a little bit of a play around uh, with it myself in my own sandbox. Um, a gold apple from the... Okay. Cool. Um, but, yeah, as I was saying, you know, I've kind of had a little bit of a mess around in my own sandbox. And I have found that, you know, this is pretty straightforward to do, to use, you know, as a program. Um, it's got a number of preset commands, uh, much like Game Salad would, if you've ever used that program, um, to basically give your, your characters uh, brains and to provide them with an idea. And in fact, I think they call them brains specifically in the tutorial um, for Project Spark. We've got an archer. Help me kill five, five albums in this forest. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I believe they're called brains in this, um, in the game, in Project Spark, uh, for your character specifically, on what he should do in specific situations and things like that. And um, if you've played um, Final Fantasy XII, actually, and you've basically preset commands for your, your party to do in different situations and things like that, you know, you'll pretty much have a good grasp of what you need to do 
in Project Spark as well, you know? Uh, it just takes a matter of time and uh, a bit of effort to make yourself things. The other thing about Project Spark and building worlds and things like that is um, the tool is quite handy, it's quite easy to use. You have a ton of textures, you have an amazing little tool that's in the shape of a ball, and uh, it's used for both creating and destroying, and because it's a ball, you know, it, I think you can change its shape actually. Um, it, it's really easy to use, it's really great, you know, it, it's... Um, and I know that this sounds like an awful lot of uh, praise for this thing, but I just think it's a really great tool for you to kind of have a go at and to, to just try it out and try your hand at developing yourself a game. You know, I mean, I don't know how long it took the guy to make this particular world or this particular uh, game in itself, or this self-contained game. Uh, but, you know, it, it seems to have, you know, paid off and seems to have been really great. So we're probably not going to do all the quests here. We're going to do one or two and hand them in. And uh, at that point, we will leave it there in this particular world. Because there's one other thing that I kind of want to show you guys that I came across the other day um, while I was messing around doing a bit of research on Project Spark. So I've actually played this particular world before. Uh, so it, it's pretty, pretty sweet. I've stolen all, stolen all your apples, bitch. What are you going to do now? Oh. That's something I should have taken care of before I started recording. And in fact, I will now. Okay. So now that that's dealt with, let's carry on. Tally-ho! So now we've got this guy to deal with. Oh, our first boss. What's going to happen here? And I don't have a shield. Shit, what's going to happen? I'm going to use my, my advanced speed to get out of his way to dodge his attacks. But this isn't the world boss. No, 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 no. You don't get off that easy. Oh shit. What's throwing those at me? Teleport crystal quest completed. Reward 10 coins. Cool. So let's go get our shield and then we'll leave it there for this particular game It's in itself. That's something as well that people haven't really addressed when they're making things in Project Spark. That, you know, you can kind of cheat your way around the world a little bit. That they don't make the the peaks quite large enough. Uh, well, obviously in this situation you're supposed to be able to get up here. Um, but in a lot of other worlds they don't quite make the walls steep enough uh, or large enough um, to kind of prevent people from cheesing their way through an area and simply climbing over uh, the walls directly to the end area, but you know this one obviously you know you were supposed to be able to get up there and uh, Pick up that chest, you know Give me a hundred coins and I give you a better sword, but who's gonna give me a shield? Ah, This person Here's a shield it gives you more health So it doesn't actually act as a shield. It just gives me loads of health If I press B, I'll get all of my hearts back So this is Link's adventure Um. It took, I presume it took an awful lot of work to make this entire area because what with all these quests involved, um, you know, it, I'd say each one of those had to be programmed specifically and items had to be put in place in relation to different things. And, you know, hand-ins can only be active when you have all these different things. And Yeah, there's a whole bunch of work involved here and, you know, whoever did it, great job. In fact, we're going to see it as soon as we hit the start button anyway. Or as soon as we hit the exit button. Um, so, Anta Realm, really great job. So I'm going to give you a thumbs up. Nice work, buddy. Awesome job. Anta Ren, even. 
Sorry, I forget your name in crack. So, the last one that I want to look at is something that I thought was really, really interesting. Um, it was along here. Yeah, top rate at all time. It was down along here somewhere. Sidestep, I, uh... It was around here somewhere. Like, there's some really cool stuff, like there's lightsabers and things like that. Um, but something I really want to take a look at is a music video that was made in Project Spark. Uh, so let's see here. Most downloaded all time. Where did I find that? Come on! Come on! Uh, Team Dakota Selections, was it in there? Team Dakota Creations? Was it this one? Yes, this is the one. Guilty all the same. This is a music video for the song of the same name by Linkin Park. Um, and Team Dakota, they took the song and they made a music video for it in Project Spark. Um, and yeah, it's basic, but it's fun. It's handy to do. And, you know, the game lets you know when you've ma messed up based on the song and how it changes and things like that. So we're going to take a look at this, we're going to play this, um, and then once that's done, we will leave the video there, okay? But let's play this first. Or at least we would have if it weren't for the Warner Music Group. Because uh, basically the Warner Music Group kind of came down on us a little bit hard uh, with regards to this video due to the content that it originally contained. Uh, because. They blocked the, the video worldwide because it featured the song by Linkin Park, who presumably are signed to the Warner Music Group. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't show that content. Um, now, truth be told, all it really did include was a song by Linkin Park and a whole bunch of uh, premium paid content from the store in Project Spark. Though it would have been a fun point to end on. Uh, unfortunately, it can't be the case today. Uh, so I'm very sorry about that. But thanks for watching this far, you know, really appreciate that. Um, and don't forget uh, to leave a like, a comment and a subscribe maybe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. And maybe I'll do another follow up uh, with regards to um, how to go about using Project Spark. Um, if this gets enough likes and things like that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, but thanks again for watching guys. We really appreciate absolutely everything that you guys do for the channel. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Much love. Bye bye.